Well, greetings to everyone and welcome to another class of Roland College School of Entrepreneurship. I am excited to be with you today uh, because I know the Lord's going to do great things. And I know that you've been working diligently in your businesses. I'm excited to, to, to hear the updates and to discuss next steps and the way forward for uh, between now and next Tuesday. And so uh, we thank the Lord for what he's doing. Let's open up in a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father, I need you. I need your strength. I need your wisdom, knowledge from on high. You're the ultimate source of all, all wisdom, all knowledge, all instruction, all understanding. Lord, what is man that we can know our way other than what you have given us in the full reliance upon your Holy Spirit? So that's what we do this day. Lord, I completely surrender my mind, my heart, my thoughts, my studies, what I think I know, and I give it into the potter's hands. Oh God, would you please mold, shape, so that it would prosper these entrepreneurs that have chosen to build kingdom businesses for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 All right, great. Thank you all. So here's um, what I'd like to do. Um, we're going to jump right in, and I would like to begin with um, uh, Zipporah because she has uh, she submitted some uh, photos and progress uh, on her in houses, and so uh, I want to celebrate that, and um, and then also I'll share some of that and. We'll get a, a, a verbal update from her. So, uh, but I just I want to give uh, a warm welcome of greeting to all of you uh, and some of you who have who have just joined. Uh, welcome. All right, I am going to share my screen just for a moment because I am so proud of of uh, Zipora here. One moment. Let's see if this will work here. Yes. All right. So you can see here, they sent me uh, some of the pictures and I have downloaded uh, so that I can see the full amount, but uh, the full photo. But uh, these are just some of the photos that she shared of the progress that she's making um, and how she's able to e extend and grow. And those are some good looking hens, uh, chickens. Those are some good looking chickens right there. So well done, uh, Zipporah. Uh, that is exactly what we want to see and, and have in mind for the progress. Uh, so congratulations. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank yes. you. Now, uh, I, was also, I did also a video. Unfortunately, it was too long. I tried to upload. Okay. I've tried all week, but I tried to edit. Oh, okay. I was told it was too long. Okay. I felt so bad because I was at the farm <laughs> for a long time and I wanted to do all of them and present both the photos and the video. Okay. But that I, would be uh, fantastic. Um, did you yeah. try uploading it to YouTube? No. Uh, try uploading it to YouTube because YouTube can handle large files in long videos and then you just okay. share the link, not the file. Ah, okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. I've actually been in, in so much trouble trying so much, but Sorry. I couldn't well, that it was, yeah. That, so, that's why we have class because we can solve problems in 10 seconds that others spend a week on. So, <laughs> uh, well done though. It was still excellent that we got to uh, see that progress and that was great. So tell us outside of spending the time trying to upload uh, what were some things that you learned this week in the lessons, or the last, actually over the last two weeks, bring us up to speed with any questions and updates? Um, yes, uh, as much as I wanted to begin, like I had promised how to start, um, I got a small challenge. I could not get uh, the carpenter myself because I went there actually, and he was too busy to come to the farm. So we arranged, he would come later because he was busy on uh, another farm. So we arranged he would come the next time I'm going home to the farm actually. But uh, all the same, I can say uh, my production has uh, improved. I was able to get some uh, eggs, which I brought here and I've already sold. Good. 
Yes. <laughs> I, would, I actually was feeling like I should have gotten the, the photos for the eggs because <laughs> now, <laughs> because the video failed, I said, I've sold the eggs and I did do the photos, but it is a good thing. I'm making good progress. That's great. We praise the Lord. So, um, uh, so how many, what, what's the biggest challenge right now, I guess, that, uh, that you are facing or that you're going to be addressing this week? Yeah, like I, I really want to get started with the construction so that because of space, the space that they are in, the chickens are in right now is too small and I want to expand. And uh, already I have some chicks which have been hatched. So I want to move them to the new place as soon as possible. But all the same, it is still working at the moment, so it is uh, small. So my challenge is uh, to start that construction. I see. But uh, as I'm able to, it is still yeah, running. As soon as I'm able to begin, then I can move them. And the temperature is coming uh, tomorrow, you say? Not tomorrow. In uh, I said it can come in the course, at the end of the week, actually. Oh, oh very good. OK. So as soon as it comes, I'll be at the farm and then maybe we get started yeah, yeah. so if I'm able to do that then i'll have enough space and i believe now i can be able to yeah continue well yes yes uh, now yes. when the, will the egg production continue to ramp up um so when will more eggs uh, that you're able to sell um is that every day right now yes they are collected every day yes when i get enough crates now i'll be able to go and get them and i bring them to nairobi to sell Okay, very good. Yes. Very good. Okay, yeah. excellent. Well, keep, uh, keep us posted uh, and, uh, and certainly try the YouTube uh, trick to get that uh, you know, uploaded. So that would be great. Yeah, thank you. I actually did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those are frustrating. I'm telling you, it is so frustrating. Technical stuff, trying to figure out why can't I send this? I've got to get this. Uh, yeah, I slept very late last night, <laughs> even after the last two, trying to do it. And it did almost three quarter part of it, and then it just said it cannot continue. Yeah. Uh, but I'll, I'll do it the YouTube way, as you say. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for sharing. All yeah. right. Uh, who else? Let's go to um, who, who, who is going to share about their business next and update us. I'm going to the spreadsheet one moment. Yes. Uh, I'd like to hear from Helen, maybe an update, uh, Helen, uh, on the uh, students recording clients, kind of what's happening with the marketing. Uh, if we can get an update, that'd be well. Okay, um, um, last week and the two weeks, uh, I've been busy a, a little bit with work. I, I work, I, I do mission work. So I was out in the field in the Northern part of Kenya. Mm. So, but um, uh, my business was going on. Uh, we had distributed flyers to the schools um, but that one is a bit slow. Uh, we have not received uh, any communication from the school yet whether the, the parents would want to bring their children. But I think uh, it's because they are busy with learning at school. But the one on one, I mean, word of mouth is really working very well. Uh, the lady, I, the, the two ladies I talked to, the, the two musicians I talked to, uh, they have brought like from last week to this week, we have had four new clients. Wow, wow, mm -hmm. that is great. Through the word of mouth, that, that is now not the music school, but uh, the, the studio recording. Yes. The music clients. Uh, uh, had, let me see here. Uh, you only had like seven recording clients when we first started. So if you've got four mm -hmm. new ones, that's uh, that's that's over fifty percent growth from a percentage standpoint. <laughs> you know? Yeah, so, that's 
That's amazing. Uh, mm -hmm. So I have learned that uh, actually, mostly it is the word of mouth in, in this one uh, that is working very well. Uh, for the music school, mm, we, we, it's a bit slow. We only have one more uh, student who joined this week, last week. Mm -hmm. And so um, you're still wondering how to go about that. Um, on, the, on the music lessons. Yes, on the, on the music school. Did your flyer, uh, I remember we talked about what it had on it, but um, did, were, were the students or parents supposed to contact the school to arrange it with you or you directly? Mm, to the school, the school, because we put uh, the telephone number there and uh, the, the contact, the, the email address. So we were hoping that they will contact, but I, I don't know, maybe we'll still follow up with perhaps we were thinking, we had discussion with the two teachers. Um, they thought perhaps they need to go and talk to the music teachers in, in those schools so that when they are over their holidays, uh, the parents can, can bring their students, their children, yeah. When, when does school end there uh, for the school year? Uh, we have to, we have uh, the, the external schooling program, which they, they do the UK. Uh, and there's one that is in the Kenyan uh, school program. Uh, this year, it has been very tough. The, 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 the school program is very long and the, the the holiday is short, so perhaps um, the Kenyan students may be a challenge to get those who are doing Kenyan exam, uh, perhaps those who are doing ex external education system because they have long uh, holiday. That is where we may need to concentrate on. Well, it may be. And uh, <clears throat> the, the other idea uh, that I would like for us to consider is what if you spoke to the school and those, those the parents of one or two days a week after school, you your your teachers go there to give the music lessons instead of them having to come to you? Okay, because uh, that's a good idea. More people may sign up if they can just go ahead and get their lessons, and then the parent can come. Uh, you know, an hour later than what they would have to pick them up, perhaps or you know, whatever the situation, but I, I think that that may work very well um, because you're going, you're, they don't have to go an additional place. You're, you're going there. And it works really well if you say, hey, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we do this, or Tuesdays and Thursdays, we do that, or, um, you know, and then that way the teachers go there and provide mm -hmm. the service. Yeah, yeah. Actually, the, the, the parents uh, who called this week, last week, the new student, he requested that uh, the lessons be done at his home. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah. so we, we agreed that we had to charge more because right. of the cost of transport, uh, and he was okay with that. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. That is a business model. I mean, the mobile uh, mobile everything is, is a business. <laughs> Whatever has been uh, stationary to, make, to mobilize it, uh, convenience, uh, in emerging economies, uh, people pay for convenience. Uh, it is mm -hmm. why before the 1960s, actually, even McDonald's, they thought was illegal in the 1960s. It went to the United States Supreme Court because they thought the business model was illegal that McDonald's is doing. And of course, everyone does it. And so I say that uh, because that was the first time in, in, in post-World War II history uh, where, where people stopped making a lot of their own meals and they started eating out. Uh, the, the birth and growth of restaurants uh, became uh, prevalent. And there was a lot of cultural stigmas tied to that. Uh, there was uh, people not, you know, because there were more women entering the workforce. There was all kinds of uh, changes, cultural changes. Uh, but one of the things that did was it opened up new business models and new businesses and new needs. 
Uh, and mm -hmm. this mobile delivery of things is one of them. Because if parents are having to get off work, go to school, get their child, get them over to a music lesson, take little, take the other one to a sports lesson and to take the other one to soccer practice and then take, and then have to get home and cook dinner and then have to do this. And, you know, it becomes too much. And so uh, the businesses that are able to have, that have learned to, how can I make your life easier? How can I uh, make it more convenient for you to buy from me? And if that means us going to you, money is usually not the problem. Um, it's usually not the problem, especially those who value convenience. People who value convenience pay for it, pay for it. Uh, it's the difference between private transportation and, and, and public transportation. Why would somebody buy a car uh, that costs you know, all of this to run every year when they can take public transportation for a few pennies? Well, it's because of the convenience. I don't have to wait 15 stops before I get where I'm going. So it's, it's the same thing. It's the experience and the convenience of it. And music lessons, uh, because they are private lessons usually and one-on-one, -on -one, uh, or obviously some groups, but in this case, one-on-one, -on -one, um, it makes perfect sense to do that. So, uh, and just so you know, when I was a little boy, I, my parents had me take piano lessons. Uh, wow. And whenever, whenever I was starting in the second grade, uh, and then whenever I got into the seventh grade, I really wanted to play the trumpet. And I wanted to quit piano so bad, but they wouldn't let me because I was really good. So uh, after they said, well, we'll see how you do on the trumpet. So they added the trumpet. And um, literally a year later, I started winning uh, state, statewide awards uh, in the in the eighth grade <laughs> and so they said okay you can stop uh, piano <laughs> and I just focused on trumpet um, but it was it was uh, an hour lesson every single week and my parents didn't have the money for that uh, especially back in piano uh, days but it was because they valued uh, they were very they did not have uh, much money at all oh goodness we lived in a very very small trailer and five of us and um, my dad was going to bible college and um, you know but this was what they valued. They wanted us to have the arts because they, if what they, what it does for brain development and for mood, just for everything, just the skill uh, that comes with it, and um, the ability to read music. You know, these are lost arts in our world today. Uh, it's not even just sometimes about playing the instrument; it's about picking up something and be able to hum it based on sight reading. Uh, you know, not just playing by ear. Uh, both are great skills. You know. Um, uh, so I think that uh, the, the word of mouth is the right way to go. I do think with the school specifically making it more convenient uh, so that the parents don't have to go to a second place is going to, to really help your business as well. Yeah, thank you. Um, the challenge um, I'm having is I haven't found someone to help me with the uh, posting on social media like uh, Facebook. Um, and Twitter and Instagram or YouTube. So I'm still working on that. Um, I hope in the next one week, I'll, I'll be able to do that. So let me ask this, your recording studio does not, you already own it, right? Like you don't have to rent it and then rent it out again. Okay, can you, can one of your recording artists uh, or somebody who wants to record, maybe someone in your church or uh, things like that, um, can you exchange uh, services. So say if you do this X amount of hours for me, uh, then, you know, cause even it's very cheap. It really is very cheap. Um, if someone posts on across all four thing, uh, platforms, three or four platforms, uh, three times a week, uh, the, the time is, is in preparing the content, not in the posting, you know, it's in preparing what to say and what image goes with it or what video mm -hmm. do we tag with it. That's what takes time. And usually those people don't know what it should be because it's not their brand, it's your brand. So you end up having to do the work anyway because you're giving okay. them the post. So if I were you, um, I would take, as part of the 10 hours that you spent on your business this week, uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes of whatever it is needs to happen this week, you sit down and kind of write out the post that you want to uh, share on social media this week. And then either mm -hmm. you do it or if you want to barter with someone uh, for in exchange for recording time, then do that and say, I'm going to give you the pictures, the posting and all that stuff. And you comment on people and try to get them to, uh, you know, book an introductory lesson with us at that reduced rate, you know, then uh, by doing that, 
um, then you exchange, you know, hey, that's going to take you about two hours a week to do what I'm asking you to do. So uh, we'll give you two hours of recording time, you know, or okay. whatever, whatever the value equates to. But Yeah, um, I can do that. I will try. I'll tell you, it was I, will, a I will try and do that. People who could post for me. It was a long time because it was hard for me to justify the expense for a task that was so um, quick. Uh, well, and it wasn't so, that it was so quick. It was that uh, there are two times where I've outsourced uh, social media uh, to companies where they handled all of my social media. The problem with that is they started posting these weird things. They, 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 when they sold me on it, they were like, we're not like all the others. We're not just going to post this random content. We actually study your brand. We, we, we talk like you talk. Your voice is our voice, you know, and it's just not. It's just not. Nothing and nobody replaces your voice, your passion, your heart for this. They they do it in its rote. They do it and it's it's just factual. There's not the soul in it, you know. And um, so, and they, and then they were trying to. They focused more on how many followers and how many likes and how many this and that. And um, I thought, man, we're really off base here. On 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 if that's the metric. And, you know, and I know that that's kind of the, been the bar of did you actually reach the audience, but that has never been, ever been uh, the way I focused. I focused on creating excellent content um, and let the world judge it. Uh, we would not have Rembrandt paintings if he painted what they wanted him to paint that day. Uh, we, we would have just regular little art. You have to find what's deep inside of you and that voice comes out which oftentimes is not appreciated for years, even after we're gone. <laughs> so, but at least we were authentic and left our best work behind. Um, and that's why I remember with YouTube, uh, I remember I had these, these different companies and they just kept telling me, they're like, your videos need to be three minutes. And then there's these videos we can do that are five minutes. And, but we need some 30 second ones and, and 17 seconds. And I'm like, you guys are nuts. You're not going to say anything. You're not going to you're not going to move anyone in 17 seconds. I can um, I can give you a sound bite that you play, but then you just put me in a motivational speaker. Oh, that's inspiring. That's encouraging. That's motivating. And then you become that. I didn't want to be that. I wanted somebody who's let's sit, and it may take us an hour or two hours. Well, we're going to get to this and we're going to get past the shallowness that most people live down to the nitty gritty of what makes life, success, business, prosperity, relationships, you know, spirituality, what makes it work? The real deal. That's what you're going to get. You're not going to get a 30 second sound bite that's just, you know, warm and fuzzy. You're going to get change when people in, 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 I had, you know, a bunch of employees uh, starting in 2004, about 1,500 employees. And um, I remember they would say, uh, whenever I left that company, uh, you know, they had given me all kinds of gifts and a lot of tears and, you know, it, it was quite an emotional day. But um, even to this day, there are people that worked for me they, then and there that that they still say that was the great the highlight of their career or the greatest point in their life. Well, it wasn't because I, I, I gave, you know, 30 second deals. I got to know them. I cared. It takes time. And, um, and the people, the right people find me. My people find me is what happens, you know? So I either had to play the marketing game the way they said, but the problem is then I attract people who I'm not for. They would come, we'd get the sale, and then they didn't get it. And then we we're both unhappy, you know? Yeah. And so I was like, this is not, this is not how to do it. And so <clears throat> just like a lot of things in this world, we had to go against the grain. We had to go against the prevailing doctrine of the day in business, which is what we have to do as, as spiritual war in spiritual warfare, you know? And so uh, most of the things that many of the things in this world are upside down, as we know right now, evil is called good and good is called evil. Well, 
uh, we're not going to jump on the bandwagon for expediency's sake or for culture's sake. Uh, and the same thing is with business. I don't just jump on it just because it's the flavor of the hour. Um, I remember uh, whenever I was CEO of a uh, nutraceutical company, a manufacturing company, um, and I, they every month they wanted to come out with a new gadget, a new product, a new this. And I said, you've got to get off this product of the month merry-go-round and take a year and build one amazing product that's going to change the world instead of an average product every month that's going to make an extra buck. Your entire thinking is different uh, on this. And uh, so I think that's one of the greatest challenges. But I hope that, that is an encouragement just mm -hmm. on some of the philosophy on how you're getting clients and, and growing and social media, especially. Um, but I did tell my youngest daughter, uh, she, she's wanting to work for me. And I said, uh, I said, well, maybe you'll be my personal assistant. Uh, I'll, you'll just handle my phone and you can, <laughs> my social media, because you've, you live with me, you know, my voice <laughs> yeah, clearly inside and out. And so, but I, I'm not even so sure we'll, we'll find out at some point, I think. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah. Look, it's your brand. It's your brand. It is your microphone. You put it in someone else's hand. You don't know what they're going to do with the microphone and you don't get to really recover. I never could go public and say, hey, the reason why the last three weeks I seemed really off was because it wasn't me at all. It was a company. You know, that that's not very authentic, especially if authenticity is part of your message. Yeah. See what I'm saying? <laughs> Oops. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I'm telling you, these are real business issues that it is acceptable to have other people do it, but then we wonder why it doesn't have, you know, that impact, that punch. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, very good. Helen, thank you for the update. We look forward to hearing the progress next week. It's been a delight. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. Who's next? I think. Uh, I'd like to hear from uh, is Mr. Chietti on here? <clears throat> I know he was doing training a couple weeks ago. Yes, um, uh, greetings. How are you, brother? I'm fine. Good, good, good. Thank you. Now, yes. last time we spoke two weeks ago, you were training new staff. Uh, yes. Tell us where things are, how those, how that has been. Actually, uh, let me uh, first say I thank God because of the last uh, few weeks since we connected. Till now, I am uh, also confessing that the weeks has been uh, uh, hugely gruesome. But nevertheless, it is in God's uh, grace that uh, I've been able to do one or two things with all the things that are in my hands. June is considered one of the difficult months for accountants here in Kenya because of the uh, uh, compliance requirements. For 30th of June, everything must comply for all clients and for individuals, everybody. So we are helter skelter. I'm just laying ground uh, on the circumstances that surround me now. But nevertheless, we had a fruitful meeting with the partner. Last time we left, uh, I was supposed to go and meet the partner and evaluate the progress between January and end of April. We extended that to the end of May because we are in We had a, a, a really deep uh, conversation on various issues which are surrounding us. One was on how we are going to improve the income and uh, we evaluated on the data side because we have two sides. Uh, those we uh, we owe and those who owe us. So we start on our side. What do we expect from people? And then what are the clients expecting from us? And we realize because of the situation which we are in, we had options. 
So one of the options was to look into the side of expenditures and bring it down, making sure you pay the must pay creditors, must pay uh, utility bills, so on and so forth. And uh, we, have, after the total evaluation, we realized uh, we were at the bottom. We can't uh, do further uh, austerity measures. We are at our best. So we are left with uh, one option, and that's the best option, I think. Maybe you'll give your input and you say, instead of looking on how to continue to suppress the expenditure, why can't we expand the income? And uh, to expand our income is to look into our network and we, we expand on the success we are giving. For one client, we are, we, we are giving advisory services on taxation. You have to go in and engage and try to secure the audits. For those whom we are doing the audits and we are not doing the bookkeeping, we are not doing the tax advisory, we must offer those services. We tell them now we have the capability, we have the capacity because of reasons one, two, three. Are you able to buy our services now? And that's what we decided to do the last uh, two weeks, I think we had started the engagement much earlier on that front. And uh, I'm happy also to report we were able to sign two contracts on, on two, uh, two clients, which we are planning on now outside. One was for audit and another one was for bookkeeping. And uh, both of them are outside where I am living. I'm living in Mombasa. I mean, in Nairobi, my partner is living in Mombasa. Both of the contracts have been signed in Mombasa. Because also, that's where the volume of staff is domiciled. So it is serves best. Good enough, also, we extended to there is one of my old clients who is a lawyer. And he opened an office in Mombasa. So he is also helping us in his conducts, and uh, out of his conducts is where we secured one. And there is another discussion to add, to make three. So that front, that's where we are pressing more at the moment. That's number Good. one. Number two, I don't know whether we, I, I pause there, and then we continue on the next task. Yes, yes. Uh, there was a requirement that, uh, for uploading some documents in the, in the system. And um, I was wondering, will I go ahead and uh, download, I mean, upload uh, live contracts? Well, I don't know how we'll manage that. Maybe we can discuss that later with you. Sure. Because yes. when I upload in the system, it is there. Okay, okay. Uh, yes, and you can uh, we can correspond uh, at the office at rollingcollege.com um, on that particular thing. The, that's uh, the, the, on the agreements. That's more for startups that have never done this before. They don't know if their contracts are rock solid, because a lot of times, uh, you know, people who are just starting, they their contracts are weak, and their contracts can actually hurt them. And so, what we try to do, we have that in there as a placeholder, so that we can help protect new businesses. But obviously, you've had extensive number of clients over the years, so you know. Your contracts are rock solid, uh, especially even if an attorney has done them for you. So it's that's fine. Uh, but as long as they're there, that's fine. Um, but I, let me say this on um, the services side. I, I and, and I agree with the area of growth, where the client, new clients are coming from. Um, <clears throat> the fact that you got a new audit client and a new uh, bookkeeping client. Uh, I go back to to the firms in the United States that have grown huge in this sector. Um, it's because they found that perfect niche of who they serve. Um, their target customer most of the time was this small business person, not small as in, um, you know, 50,000 USD revenue and smaller, uh, but in that 
you know, 500 to 5 million in sales range, uh, USD, um, you know, that was kind of a sweet spot where they kept their books uh, or had maybe less extensive audits uh, or, uh, and then because where the real money added on, they added on, and you, you mentioned this about adding services, uh, they added on HR uh, functions uh, and they added on payroll. So uh, being able to handle the payroll or HR functions, because it, here's the deal, if you're handling their payroll, it makes them a lot li more likely to have you do their bookkeeping. So it ends up selling two products or three products uh, by having one particular pro product down here because the, you, you're able to sell the whole ecosystem at that point. Uh, in fact, you may even have a package price where the audits are free or you know uh, things like that. If you, if you have our, our business, our small business package, this is what it is on a monthly basis, you know, um, and then the other service that a lot of them uh, go into, obviously not all at once, this is, you know, but, um, and that is uh, short-term labor, temporary labor, uh, maybe day labor, uh, or, or they usually even go longer, but I'm, I'm trying to convert it to Africa, maybe day, but they do short-term labor um, staffing, um, which may be like three months usually here in the United States, uh, maybe one month, three months. And then they can roll over to, to full-time employees. But but I'll tell you, the payroll and the HR are the two biggest money makers. That once you add those type of services, it backfills your your bookkeeping and your audit clients. It's it's really interesting how that works. Um, so that may be something as for you and your partner to consider as you're getting as you're as you're as you're moving forward. Uh, and there's a lot of software that helps with that. Any more, you don't have to be. It's not overly complicated to be doing that. Uh, especially like in QuickBooks or, you know, things like that, where you're the monthly, uh, you know, it might be like $20 per, per employee um, or, or $15 per employee, but you're able to pay by direct deposit, you know, same day or next day, run payroll automatically for those with salary um, or hourly, you know, there's, uh, there's, the, I just had it all automated whenever I had a string of coffee shops where payroll, you know, just about ran itself. Um, I, I spent about an hour a week, 30 minutes a week looking at it, um, just kind of cl clicking the submit and approve button. But um, that was, I was able to do that. And, you know, so I think that there's some, some, some options there that will help increase the number of clients on the booking. I, I agree with you. Uh, if you allow me to, uh, to interject to at this, I agree with you on that. Uh, but when I invert and look at it, I reflected from where I see it is uh, because of the issue which I mentioned in the beginning that we we lost almost uh, all the employees because of COVID-19. So the new employees, even if we give them the assignment, they will not be able to function when they are not with friends. Personally, I can function, but given the full-time employment, and the client needs that personal touch and contact in terms of when they want their payroll done, they want to check on their things, they want me on site. That now becomes a direct inhibitor. And that's why my partner uh, went full, full time, so that he's able to deal with clients which need that personal contact every day, every time, or frequently. And we are looking at that now to improve on that by training first the employees to help and now we enter into that in full I agree with you totally. Uh, then the other thing which um, um, I, I, I learned also, you talked of the, what do you want, what specifics do I need to have or to see in the plan. That's what I've done for the last 10 years to sustain to this fund. Because I targeted few clients who personally know me or personally understand my environment, and then we work together. But at the strike of COVID-19, actually one of the clients was giving us uh, uh, almost 50% uh, of the total income, and then they sank. So we almost sank with it. By God's grace, we are buoyant. 
So after learning that lesson, actually there is also another one major client who was a, is, a, is, is an international investor wanting to invest in, in, in Mombasa. Was there some point which I'll share, I'll share with you separately on that? Then we we'll discuss on it. Because it was uh, it was a huge involvement. And then after we brought him to a place where he is now able to, to fly now, he, he some kind of now started to desert. And that's now where we we are hurt most. Because we gave him a lot of huge effort into uh, creating a lot of uh, information for him, creating a lot of base for him, connecting him with the government, connecting him with the top lawyers who are helping him. And uh, the gentleman is, is you know, trying to invest a lot of money. So that also messed our time, but we can discuss that separately. Very good. Question for other you. Point, yes, the other ahead. point is, uh, the other point was uh, the partnership deeds between me and my partner. That one is ready and uh, it is uh, waiting on my partner to edit and give the lawyer for signing. So possibly before I, I sign off, maybe I can share with you. Yes, please. That would be great. But te technically, what I realized is now, because the business is now changing, it's changing hands. Previously, it was a sole proprietor, myself only. But now it's shared. So it has to go in special in terms of a strategy. So I was, I was thinking, do I go 50 50 or should be a different ratio? Because that's how businesses go. You do a, do a mistake, then you realize you, have, you can't make a decision because you, you have, because of the business share. I was thinking of 49.51 or something which is different while I am at the top because of the French out. Yes, I definitely <laughs> uh, encourage, encourage that most of the time. Um, <clears throat> this, is a, this situation is a little bit unique because you started the business. You owned the business. Yes. You got the business to where it's at. Um, and for someone to come in, even if they're going to start doing, you know, 99% of the work, um, that's a lot of equity to be giving someone for years worth of getting a business off the ground. Um, and so I'm really glad that you brought this up because this is something that everyone on this needs to learn. Um, in, in the short answer is in your specific situation, I do agree that a, a, a maybe a 5149 would work. I definitely would not do 5050 in your situation. Um, if so, you are you're doing something that I have rarely, I, if ever, have seen someone do. Um, and simply because of the amount of work that you did. Um, and they're, and they're not, they're not buying. Usually if someone goes in nearly 50, 50, it's because they bought into the business. So once a business is established in order to get that amount of equity, uh, usually they are paying, uh, they're bringing money and time. Now it sounds like they're bringing time going full time, you know, to do this. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, unless they brought, uh, and it's, it's, and you know, this, I mean, it's, you take the valuation of the business and, um, and then, you know, if you're doing 50%, this is basically the financial, it's like I'm handing you a check right now for this amount of money. I'm giving it to you, just giving it up front, you know? And so um, I, I like personally on those type things, <clears throat> I like it to where it's more of a, a buy-in over time, even if it's a time buy-in. So uh, what I mean is uh, maybe we'll give, five percent or ten percent a year for the next four years at the end of the year for your performance you know <coughs> things along those Sorry. lines uh thank you uh so that's what i would be looking to um uh in a perfect world that's that's what you would do if you're going to just give equity because 
of the amount of time you they've got to prove themselves like, just like you did to get the business there and you will eventually give it just not all at once here's the keys to the kingdom the, but in the broader scope of partnerships and uh, we have an entire lesson on that uh, in a few weeks but um, there are there are uh, three partnerships I think that uh, legal entities that I have right now uh, before three years ago, I never one time had a partner, never had a partner. Um, but, uh, and let me exp give like, uh, in fact, even the, the, the lessons, I, I, I usually shy away from them, but there are circumstances where they are beneficial. That's why we have them. Um, and so one example, um, I, I, there's only one partnership out of those three or two, two partnerships that are 50-50. Two of the three are 50-50, but here's why they were 50-50. Because we were both starting at the same point at the same time, and we both brought equal uh, parts to the relationship. So in the one case, uh, uh, my partner is Peter Lowe, who was of the Peter Lowe Get Motivated Success Seminars. They were the largest running uh, seminars in the world. Uh, and he, he hosted, uh, uh, four U S presidents, uh, Margaret Thatcher, mother Teresa, the Dalai Lama, uh, Larry King. These were just his personal friends, you know, uh, and even when you talk to him, he'll say when I was, when mother Teresa and I were having lunch, you know, in Calcutta, or when we were doing this, it's just, that's his life. And, um, and so Peter and I became, became friends and, uh, and he had never had a business partner either. His, his Get Motivated Success seminars, uh, he was doing several hundred million dollars USD in sales uh, and had a very small staff. Uh, so, I mean, he was really doing financially well. Financially. Well, so we started this, but the reason we started uh, together, uh, and it was called Robertson Lowe. So then you have whose name goes first, who's this goes, you know. And uh, so, you know, when we talked about it, we, we, we actually took a trip to Argentina with nothing but a backpack and uh, no hotel. We were going to fly. We flew there overnight, uh, first class. We walked around Buenos Aires and then we flew back, uh, you know, because it's 12, 14 hours or whatever uh, each way. So we were gone for three days and never uh, we were in a hotel. <laughs> um, but but it, we were talking about these kind of things, which does what? Um, and so when you look at Robertson Lowe, the reason we went with a 50-50 split is because I already had the, I was already doing what he wanted to do. There was no revenue. So we were starting at zero financially, but I already had uh, uh, entrepreneurs uh, with our entrepreneur huddles, uh, our CEO groups at the time. So those CEO groups, uh, that's what led into us uh, starting the CEO cruise. So that CEO cruise kind of became what he and I did. And then we did a, a, a six city tour called the Business Battleground, which was almost like what he had done, except in a smaller fashion. It's what he used to want to do. But I had relationships in these different cities and could do the, get the, get the space and get the table set up and get, you know, host people for the day and so forth. And so because of that, we did 50-50. The, <clears throat> the other component here, is uh, the other 50 50 is 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 in, a, in an area where we both came at it I brought I brought buyers he brought manufacturers and so then we created this the intermediary distribution company and we did 50 50 because he brought one side I brought the other now there is one technology company that I am a minority investor in at 12 percent stake now that 12%, um, uh, there is one other person who has like 15%, but he's put in $6 million USD investment. I didn't put in one red cent. So I got 12%, he got 15%. And then the, uh, the, the individual that has written the software and, and own, you know, uh, really it was his company has the 70 some percent because, and, and I'm perfectly fine with that 12% of someone else's company that I didn't build, that I didn't run. Now, 
it what changes is if if I was working full time in his business. If I was working full time in that business, then you either have to pay me like an employee, you have to pay me the salary, you know, or the the equity has to has to really go up, um, because. But the good news with a partner, and this is the this is why you have to think through these kind of things. What happens if um, you've got the partner, and then now business starts to slide, and um, he can no longer afford the business can't pay him for time, right? Just like you as a business owner, you know, if the money's not there, you don't get paid. Well, that's fine if you own the business. It's not fine if you don't own the business. If you don't own the business, you're going to end up going and getting a job because they got to put food on their family's table. So then you've got somebody who walked away from your business for all intents and purposes, but they still own nearly half of your company. That's not, that's what you don't want to happen. Uh, but it happens all the time. It happens all the time here. Uh, things change. Business it has a little low spell. And instead of everyone keeping their hand in the plow, usually the people who didn't start it flake. And, um, uh, but yet they go get a job. They go on their merry way. You can't, you can't, you're stuck with your, you know, what you have. But then, <laughs> Uh, but then you know, times come around, they still own 50%. You can't take it back. So anyway, those are my considerations for, for partnerships. Here. Yeah, I, I, I like that. It's a good insight. Good. Yeah. Good. Wonderful. The good, thing, the, the, good thing, the good thing, my partner left uh, a, a full-time employment for this. Yes. And uh, the agreement is he's earning the salary from there. So... Uh, with all good purpose and intention, I, I think he will be keen to keep the business because that's where he's earning his lady. Yeah. But the dynamics do change because of the law here and the way people work here. Uh, but there are the basics. The basics. The good thing is also a brother in the Lord, mm -hmm. someone I've known for, for quite a while. So. That's how I have confidence that it will be good. But you have to tighten it from the beginning. But as the business grows, priorities change and interests also change. So that there will be a control on the appetite, either for taking over the business or for selling the business. And that's my intention. What I'll do Let me uh, say, uh, if you we need to make sure there's a clause in there that um, that if he ever leaves the business for any reason, um, it uh, the, the, he the, he loses the equity. That the equity is only there as long as he is part of the company. That will protect you in some ways. Good, good. Yes. So I don't know whether you there's any more to discuss on on that. I think we're good uh, for today on this front. Um, there was one thing you mentioned that I want to just agree with. Uh, <clears throat> you said that he was a brother in the Lord. And I, for everyone on this call and that ever hears, uh, you know, my perspective on this, when, when scripture talks about as believers, we are not supposed to be unequally yoked together. Uh, a lot, obviously, that's usually used in terms of marriage that uh, you don't marry an unbeliever or that you don't marry uh, someone that uh, is not uh, spiritually grown and mature. Uh, so literally of, of like, of, of like my equal uh, yoke there. Uh, but I can tell you that as a matter of practice, apply that to business partnerships, apply that to business partnerships. Um I'm going back through old attorneys that I've had that were not believers that gave me advice even on this front. Um, that was, it was said in a worldly way, but it's godly counsel in terms of um, do not get into business with someone that is not uh, uh, of the same mind like this because uh, that it will prevent a lot of heartache. But really think back to that, that you are not unequally yoked. Just everyone, as you look to different partnerships and, uh, and, and we're talking about, as you've heard, 
we've been talking about, uh, Mr. Kieta and I have been talking about the actual business uh, partnership, uh, not our partners like, uh, you know, we partner with this distributing facility, distribution facility to distribute our products. That's different. We're not talking about that level. I don't have to go make sure that every customer is a believer in every, you know, <laughs> things. We're, I'm not saying to that degree. I'm just saying that the, in the context that he and I have been talking uh, for the last bit, uh, that what he said, it has to start there. Just like in dating and marriage, you start with, are they, do they have a close personal walk with the Lord? Because here's why, here's why. It's not like there's something magical about it. It's that, Lord, if you are leading me to get into this partnership in the business, then if that person is listening to the voice of God and believe that we are supposed to be in partnership together, and I believe that they are surrendered to the will of God for their life and they're listening to him and following and obeying him. Then when we disagree, just like in any marriage, there's going to be disagreement at times. When we disagree, then I know the Holy Spirit of God will speak to them or and speak to me and they work and, and works it out. But if you don't have that foundation, then it always ends in messy, uh, you know, legal issues. And so it's more than just, oh, are they a believer? It's, it truly is, uh, as, as you, as um, class heard uh, Mr. Kennedy just talk about, it's, it's having the mind of Christ that, you know, this is the right thing. This is the right person. And they feel the same way. And then once you have that confirmation from the Lord, it doesn't matter what happens. So as long as you know that you're walking in obedience in this matter, uh, if this is ever any of your situations, then you can rest assured knowing if this goes south, if this, if something does not work, I know that it was for, for my good and God's glory, because I know that I was walking in obedience into this partnership. That's all I want people to be able to say when it comes to partnerships, um, that, they, that you know for a fact that that is what God wanted you to do in this situation. Uh, and, and, and for each of you, as you contemplate it, most people get partners for the wrong reasons. They get partners because they needed some money in a pinch. And so they took the money, but because they took the money, they got a partner. They got somebody who now has 30% equity and wants to control the whole thing. Uh, and then the co company loses its culture, loses its ethics, loses its way, uh, loses its impact, you know, uh, all because you just like Jacob and Esau, Esau took the pottage. Uh, the porridge, uh, because he was so hungry in that moment. He he exchanged his birthright for temporary gratification. And so many entrepreneurs do that when they take money uh, in exchange for equity from investors and from partners, people who become partners, uh, all because they had that Esau moment. So as you all have been able to see from this conversation, <clears throat> there's a whole lot more to discuss about partnerships than what it just seems like on the surface. So, and, and I think that that is one area where I, the, all of the, many of the African entrepreneurs that I've talked to over 700 in person last August, uh, the, the idea of partnerships are so prevalent that uh, I, I fear sometimes that they don't think all the way through it, kind of like we vetted it here today. And so I trust that, uh, that, that our entrepreneurs uh, have the knowledge of the holy, we, we, we seek the wisdom of God on these matters. And to me, ladies and gentlemen, this is what defines a kingdom business. This is what makes you different than all of the entrepreneur schools, than all of the, all of the thinking of this world. Uh, that's what separates you and us uh, is how we seek the Lord in these matters. So very good. Mr. Caddy, many thanks to you as well. And congratulations on the, on the growth. Uh, okay. Uh, our time has has passed, and uh, I know we were going to get an update uh, on the pharmacies, but I think at this time what we'll do. I will um, uh, I will close in prayer. Does anyone have any burning question that you want to ask for this week? I want to give you this opportunity uh, to move your business forward. If there is a place that you're stuck. <clears throat> okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Father in heaven, oh, how I praise your name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, we come before you today, humbled, unworthy, in our own flesh, in our own non-existent righteousness. We come before the throne of God, clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ alone. And as children of God, heirs to Christ Jesus as children of the living God. Lord, would you go with each entrepreneur this week? Lord, it's not just chickens. It's not just pharmaceuticals. It's not just accounting. It's not just music lessons. It is, it is God's love on earth. It is the living testimony of who Jesus Christ is in our every moment, every interaction, every client, every customer every employee, every partner, every vendor. Oh, Lord, would you strengthen us? Strengthen the work of our hands. May we do our work with excellence. May we not be lazy. May we be efficient with our time. May we redeem the time. As First Thessalonians says, Father, I pray your, your greatest blessings upon those in this class. Protect them, protect their families, keep them healthy, bless them financially as they are faithful and obedient to you. Lord, even in proportion to their obedience to you, would you bless them? We thank you for the goodness of the Lord, for your mercy, your grace in our lives. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. 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 Thank you, you brothers and sisters, and students, amen. Listeners. May the Lord bless you this week. And we will reconvene next Tuesday at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blessed week. Thank you.